On that positive note, let's talk about what we did sell over the weekend. And I'm also going to be sharing some viewers' comments throughout this video. Hope you like that. Long time since we've been here. By golly, we did it. Or should I say Mark did it. He has all the trays taken down as of what is today? January 30th. So we've made progress. Not a lot of sales over the weekend. I only have five, but it's a lot slower this January. How about for you? Good morning. It's Monday, January 30th. And as I said upstairs, we don't have a lot of sales. So I decided to ask Mark, how were sales in January? Two years ago, one year ago, what kind of eBay sales did we have then? As you know, I never share our sales. And the reason I don't do that, number one, it's personal. And secondly, this isn't a competition. What is good for you and your sales may not be good for us. And what's good for us and our sales may not be good enough for you. So we just don't share our sales. I will say this, our sales in January of 23 this year pretty much match our sales in January of 21. But the year 2021 turned out to be the absolute best year ever we've had on eBay better than ever. Couldn't believe all the sales that we had. But what happened since then? Hmm. 2021, that was so good, rolled over into January of 2022. So we were expecting a really good year last year. Did we have it? No. We did not have a great year in 2022. Some eBay sellers did, of course. Depends on what you buy, how much you list, the prices of your items. There are so many variables. But for us, 2022 slowed down a lot. And so when it rolled over to January of 2023, not that great. And as I've probably said recently, I'm not sure what this year will bring. So how are your sales in January of this year? Are they on par to past Januaries? And what's your prediction for this year? Hmm. On that positive note, let's talk about what we did sell over the weekend. A left-in Colonial Village Christmas house Last week in vlog number five, I talked about sending and receiving offers and I did an experiment. And as I said in that video, when I'm sending offers on my phone, I always uncheck for counter offers. I did an experiment and I went more than just 24 hours. I went at least 48 hours plus where I sent offers on my phone. I allowed for counter offers, something I never do. I sent a $35 offer for this left in Christmas house. They could make a counter offer, but they didn't. It sold at $35 plus shipping. But out of all the offers I sent, which was probably 35 or so, this is the only sale I had. It tells me that even though the offer feature brings a lot of sales, it really does. We also need to remember that eBay actually implies that anyone that just glances for seconds at an item, pauses on it, could be flagged as someone I could send an offer to. They're not checking the heart. It might even be another reseller looking at the listing, but it works. It brings a lot of sales. Most of the time, just not last week. We sold a Hallmark Troy Aiken Christmas ornament. I had offer on it, but it sold for full asking price in 1995 plus shipping, always plus shipping. A pair of earrings sold for $10. I think I had them at 1995. They sent us the offer. Finally got paid for the coin belt buckle, the woman's belt buckle and they sent an offer to us for 15 and we accepted. And then we had an offer for $14 on a men's t-shirt. Yep, that's it for the weekend, but that's okay. I've got lots of things planned for you this week. On this Christmas Village house for the buyer, I marked with a sticky tab where the top is and where to open it. And then I wrapped the entire thing in some stretch wrap to make sure this box doesn't get wet. And of course I always double box. The Christmas Village house is in another box. For those of you who have ordered the tape dispensers that I use from my affiliate link in the description below the video, I'm going to show you how I change the tape. Here's the spool with the old cardboard. Here's the new roll of tape. I line these up, line up the cardboard, and push this down through. Otherwise, it's a little challenging to do. And I lifted it up just to push it through just a little bit more. So doing it this way makes it pretty easy. And do be careful on these teeth. It's really, really sharp. Don't let kids anywhere near this. Another slow Monday. 
That's not good, but again, I'll take everything we can get. With all the recent price increases at the grocery store, Mark and I have been checking prices everywhere. We went in for a dozen of eggs and we came out with 18. In addition to checking the price per slice of bacon, I'm starting to check the price of an egg. Yes, we are pinching pennies and we're pinching eggs. One dozen of eggs was on sale for $3.89. That's 0.324 cents. And then I looked over at the 18 count carton for $5.79 and they were 0.322 cents when you round it up. I know it's minor, but there's a point to this, and I'll show that to you later in the video. It's important to know what things cost per piece. We walked out with exactly what we needed to hold us over until our next grocery stop. I'm going to start sharing in my vlog some questions or comments and my response. My favorite one from a recent vlog is Wendy Spicer. We're heading to Harbor Freight. And there's a Salvation Army next door. And I know I said I wasn't going to thrift until after the end of March, but I can't be two doors down from a thrift store and not stop in. Yes, you can. No, I can't. The prices are pretty high in there. So didn't buy anything. Wendy Spicer said, if you stick with the Salvation Army, you can look without being tempted to buy. <laughs> Thank you, Wendy. I needed that. Kathleen Lewis asks, how are you doing with listing and selling your personal inventory? Hmm. <laughs> Good question. Not too well. I mean, Mark has sold some of his personal things and I've sold a few. Some of you might recall that I had started a channel called Avante Attic where Mark and I were going through our own personal stuff and I was making videos on it. Well, you know, <laughs> Things get busy, so I decided to start inserting some of those Avante Attic videos into the Avante Avenue channel. And I probably need to do another one because it's been a while. But there's a playlist for it on our channel. But I have to tell you, at Christmas time, I said to Mark, go get some of your toys from your childhood and let's put them under the little silver tree this year and make a little vignette just for you. Why I never thought about doing that before, I have no idea. I wish I've been doing this all along. I feel bad that I didn't think about doing that decades ago. So I'm really glad he still has some of his toys to be able to display because it just touched both of us. Sandra Dryson, if I'm saying your name correctly, I apologize if I'm not. In her comment, she asked a question. Do you have enough inventory to get to March? Hmm, maybe I should let Mark answer that one. Uh, yeah, we have enough inventory to get to March and then some. We could probably never source again between jewelry, shoes, some clothing, our personal stuff that I've mentioned. We could probably just list on eBay for the rest of our lives and never source again. But what fun would that be? Not much. Today is a listing day. Mark has a bunch of things lined up for me. And yeah, I need to stay right here and get some work done. And who knows what else we'll get into with me. You never know. Just ask Mark. This is what he has lined up for me today. Well, those are done. We just had to tweak the listing. I have some figurines made in Japan, a wall pocket, these Ellie Smith glass candle holders, this really cute cherub dish, some brass keys, old spittoon, pottery, a trivet, a frame, and some baskets. So, yep, odd collection, but gotta get it listed. I just want to show you quickly here how going to Google Images helped me identify this round dish with the cherubs on it. I typed in what keywords I could come up with. Round footed dish, lid, cherub, angels, gold, round. I guess I have round in there twice. And under Google, it defaults to all. But to the right, it says shopping. And then to the right again, it says images. And I love to go here and click on images. And as you can see, immediately, I was able to identify this as Lefton Vintage Hollywood Regency. Theirs might be golden cream. Mine is golden white with gray highlights, but I was able to immediately identify that this was a Lefton piece, even though the label was missing. So be sure to check out Google Images when you're researching. Tina Cornell wanted to know if we could turn on private listings in bulk editing. No, I cannot find private listings and bulk editing. Why not? I have no idea. It should be there. But no, I've had to add private listing 
every single time that I list something. I always make sure it's checked, especially if I choose another seller's listing and say sell similar. If you want to have private listing on your listings, make sure you check the box individually. And what it means is anyone looking at your feedback only sees feedback comment. They don't see what sold or the price it sold for. And the reason I use this, I've said it before, but I'll say it again. We send and receive a lot of offers. So when someone looks at our feedback, I don't want them to see how much I've accepted. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that lower offer. And I actually think we get higher offers because we use private listing. Can't prove it, but I believe it. Got a few things done today. Every little bit helps. I'm going to share with you what I'm making for dinner tonight. We're going to have some chili. It's a really easy recipe and when it's cold this time of year, it's just the perfect easy dinner. And if you don't know, I have a second channel, Thrifty Recipes, and I'm almost at a thousand subscribers. But based upon YouTube standards, I am lacking enough hours watched to get monetized. So if you have any interest in a cooking channel, I invite you to check out Thrifty Recipes and I would truly appreciate if you could watch all of the Thrifty Recipe videos that I've put up so far because I'm really trying to get to that 4,000 watched hours and I have to do it within a 365 day period and I'm short over 2,000. So I'd appreciate your help. It's cold outside and Mark and I decided we want some chili. This is my go-to recipe, it's so easy. You need one pound of ground beef, this is 85.15, but use what you like. I have some fire roasted diced tomatoes, but you could use regular diced tomatoes. Some chili beans, mild kidney beans, which I'll drain and rinse. One can of tomato soup. This is the ingredient that adds a little sweetness to the heat. Then this I just picked up at Aldi, not sponsored on any of these things, and have some uh, chili seasoning packets. So that's all it takes, along with I'll probably throw in some onion. So let's get it made. First thing we need to do is brown the ground beef. I'm adding some onion, it's Vidalia onion, and we buy a bunch of onions, chop them up, bag them up, and keep them in the freezer. Let's add some onion. I turn it off just for a minute, and to get the excess water and grease out that's in the pan, I just take a piece of paper towel and put it down in there, push all the ground beef and onion to the side, and I put this paper towel down in this end. I've got a second one here. These are only half sheet paper towels anyways. And throw it away. The ground beef is completely browned, so now I'm going to add a little bit of the seasoning packet directly to the ground beef. Just going to sprinkle a little bit of it. About a tablespoon, and then just give that a stir. Let's season that ground beef. Let's get the burner back on too. I have my stove set at five and a half, which is kind of uh, a little past medium. Let's start adding everything. Diced tomatoes first. We just happen to like fire roasted. I drained and rinsed the kidney beans. You have to be careful, the chili beans go in just like they are. And the can of tomato soup, whatever brand you like. So there's all the ingredients. Well, almost all the ingredients. We still need to add our seasoning packet. Every bit of it. And then give everything a really good stir. Get everything really well blended. Cover it. Turn the temperature down to about three, three and a half. And let it simmer for about 10 minutes. But don't forget about it. Check on it and give it a stir because really everything is cooked. I'm just heating it through. You don't even have to go 10 minutes. Mark and I will probably only go about five minutes because we're really hungry tonight. Oh yeah, I would say this is done. Big ladle. So Mark, what do you like best about my chili recipe? What is there not to like about it? The, the spices, the seasonings, it gives just a, a little bit of heat, uh, but not too much. And dinner is served. And Pat Yeaman asked, do you have a second store? Yes, we do. In addition to Avante Avenue, we have Avante Attic. And that store was tied to the other YouTube channel I had started, Avante Attic. But 
We kept the store to sell Mark's items and some of my own things and, you know, a variety of things. But our main store is Avante Avenue. But check them both out. You'll find links in the description below the video. We had a few sales for Wednesday. We'll take them. And they're not too bad. Not too bad. Good morning. Or should I say good noon? Because it's noon time and I'm just down here to start packing the five sales that we had. As I've said, it's slow, but we'll take them. Three are offers and two are full price. So let's get those pulled and get them packed. May not be exciting enough to share any kind of pack and ship with it and get them in the mail and see what the rest of the day brings. I'm really surprised how many patterns we've sold lately. This one is uh, Annie's Attic We Winter Trinkets. <laughs> Cute. It's sold in Avante Attic for full asking price of $9.95 plus shipping. Do you sell craft leaflets? Needlepoint, crochet, cross stitch? I don't pick them up anymore, but, and I've had these listed for a long time, but they're starting to sell more lately. People are getting crafty. Looking for a butter dish. There it is. A Johann Haviland Bavaria made in Germany, forever spring pattern, butter dish sold for four asking price of $24.95 plus shipping. Several weeks ago, we reorganized all of the Christmas boxes and I'm looking for number five. So give me just a minute here. Number six, number five. There's supposed to be a Christmas stocking in here. And yes, there are several Christmas stockings in here. Hmm, where is it? I have to tell you, I've got to say I had a little panic moment here because I looked at this and went there and it wasn't there. You know how your heart just palpitates when you can't find something? Yeah, it's here. Whew, sigh of relief. I am serious when I said for a minute there, my heart just kind of went, <gasps> where is it? This is another needlepoint Christmas stocking made with wool yarn. This one doesn't have a velvet backing. It has a red fabric backing, but if you can get both, red velvet and the wool for the needlepoint, that's a really good thing. But still, sold for quite a bit. It sold on offer for $40 plus shipping. What did we pay for it? $1. And I bought it in Hartville, Ohio last October, the 22, paid only $1 for it. And sold it for $40, woohoo! I'm definitely going to keep my eyes open for these this year. I hope you do too. And try to get the ones with the red velvet background, not just the red cotton. I'm out of my eight by six by four box. So I'm going to use this eBay 12 by six by six. When someone spends that much money for a stocking that I know a lot of handwork went into, I'm not going to fold it and put it in a bag. I'm going to ship it in a box. That's just what I do. I have two bags on it and I'm just going to gently roll it slip it inside here like i said i normally have a smaller box but i'm out of it right now so i'm just gently rolling it and i need more filler in the box so i'm going to with air pillows just trying to put some filler in the box get it folded up this is a case where i'm really counting on these corners for their edge crush test and if you've watched any of my pack and ship videos you know that I like a 32 ECT edge crush test on my box. That means all the corners of the box can withstand 32 pounds of pressure. Otherwise, it could just crush. This was something odd that I picked up. It was a fundraiser sale for a local pet adoption center that opened a couple years ago. This is an eco egg and pellets for doing laundry. I guess they're softener pellets. I don't know, I've never used them. This is the second bag that I've sold. I didn't get as much for these as I did the first bag, but they're two different scents, paid $5 for all. So this bag was $2.50. I accepted an offer for 19 plus shipping. And I'm hoping to fit it in this small priority mailbox. I love these boxes. It's box number four, and it's a really nice size for a lot of things, including coffee cups, box number four. This Mike Skinner Chase Authentics, Chase Authentics meaning the brand, sold when I sent an offer for $20 plus shipping and I paid $1 for it at a church rummage sale. So $1 to 20. Yes, definitely worth picking up. I can't find a pair of earrings that we sold. They sold on Friday. 
They paid on Monday. This is Wednesday. I have till tomorrow to ship because I'm on three-day handling. I've gone through all of my earrings. It's a numbered earring. It's not there in the bag where it should be. I've checked downstairs, upstairs. I'm about ready to check the next door neighbor's house. <laughs> um, I checked Macari. Didn't sell on Macari. I checked Poshmark. Didn't sell on Poshmark. At least they keep their records forever of what sold eBay three months. These sold in our Vontae Attic store, not Avenue. And that store, you know, doesn't have a lot of sales. So you'd think it'd be something I would remember if it sold. And of course, it only goes back 90 days right now. I guess at some point, eBay's going to show us one year's worth of sales. Even those of us that have been reselling for years and decades can have this issue. We're going to get the other packages to the post office and then I will look again. But I have opened and dumped every single bag of earrings that I have listed and haven't found them. Hopefully I'll be back this afternoon and I'll be able to say, I found them. I hope. Not feeling too good about this right now, but the day must go on. What do you do? Good morning. Before the day gets away from me, I just want to do a quick reminder that I still try every single day. I try in the morning and the late afternoon on eBay to end and sell similar 200 of my eBay listings and refresh them. And the way that I do that can be found in this video I put out Oh, I don't know, about five months ago. It's, the thumbnail says, Old Stale eBay Listings, Refresh with End and Sell Similar. Hi everyone, I'm Vicki with Avante Avenue and this is just a really short video to show you how I'm going to end and sell similar some older listings to refresh them. I will put a link for this video in the description box below the video. Every video has a description box that you can open up to show more, you know, underneath the video. And I had a comment from a new subscriber, Dave Starr. He said, thanks a bunch for this video. I've known for a long time about the advantages of relisting stale items, but no one ever explained how to do it. Your clear and detailed expansion was a great help, and I'm off to do some relisting right now. And he subscribed. So thank you, Dave, and welcome to the channel. Mark and I need to run some errands, and we'll see what the day brings. <laughs> So I might as well get some extra steps in, right? Mark is shopping Lowe's and I'm walking Lowe's. Working on that weight loss because you know what? I woke up this morning and lost another pound, pound plus actually, almost two pounds. So everything that I'm doing is working. Thank goodness. Since I'm here, I thought I'd check out their bubble wrap. Grab a piece of paper and write these down. Bubble wrap is not all the same. I use three sixteenths and one half. Oh, here's what they have for large bubble wrap. 12 inches wide, 25 feet. They just got large cush wrap. Round that up, 49 cents a square foot. Keep that number in mind. And let's take a look at it. I know you might have seen some recently under my table, but I bought that years ago. This is not, I don't know how to show you. I might have a piece at home I can show you. It is not half inch. In fact, it doesn't even tell us. It really doesn't even tell us clearly what the thickness is. But from what I can tell and from using it, it's not half in. I think it's three eighths. Remember the eggs that we talked about on Monday? And I said there was a point to showing you the eggs and why it's important to know sometimes on some things, the price for something individually, like how much it costs per egg. That was a lead in to something else that I want to talk about in this video. It's something that's awkward to talk about, but it's important to talk about. Why is it awkward? It's awkward because some of you might think that I'm just doing self-promotion, but that's not my point. My point of this is to show you and encourage you to check the price per piece of your shipping supplies, your bubble wrap, your foam wrap, your air pillows, whatever it might be, while at the same time comparing apples to apples. I did a lot of research to find the packing supplies that I use. And I have Amazon affiliate links in the description below my video that I mentioned throughout my videos as a resource for you to buy pack and ship supplies, paying the same price that I pay. The benefit to me is I get a few pennies. 
Yes, it's just a few pennies, but every penny helps. And it comes from Amazon. It's not an add-on by Amazon to pay me a few pennies. It comes from Amazon's profit. The bottom line is compare apples to apples and know the price per piece. I'm going to do a comparison, and yes, I have gloves on, my hands are cold, but I'm going to do a comparison between the brand that I use and suggest to you versus a very popular brand, which I'm not going to say the name, but you will see the name on screen, but a comparison with probably the most popular brand that you might be using and you may not realize how much you're really paying per piece. Let's get started. Let's take a look at the price. This is one half inch large bubble wrap and each roll is 100 square feet, 12 inches wide by 100 feet long. One roll is $18.99. Rounded up, that comes out to 19 cents per sheet. Two rolls, or 200 feet, is 13 cents per square per sheet. Sheet meaning 12 by 12. Three rolls comes out to 11 cents per sheet per square foot, and four rolls is 10 cents per square foot. So that's what I'm talking about. Knowing the price per square foot, and just as important, the thickness of the bubble wrap. This is half inch large bubble wrap. I rarely buy less than four rolls of bubble wrap at a time because that's the best price that I can get. Even if you go to eight rolls, you're really not saving anything. So I do suggest to you that you consider four rolls because at $39.99, shipping included, free, right? shipping included, it's 10 cents a square foot. Now let's jump over to the most popular brand that you've probably heard of and see how much their bubble wrap is. And I didn't find very much on Amazon for, for their large half inch bubble wrap. Not sure why. They have a lot of other sizes on there, but just one listing for large half inch. And then we're going directly to their website and look at what they have there and compare large half inch bubble wrap to large half inch bubble wrap. Let's go look at another brand. The brand you've probably heard about the most. This brand has two rolls, a total of 125 feet for $34. That comes out to be 28 cents per square foot. Keep that number in mind, 28 cents per square foot. The closest I can get to the $34 for the brand that I use is three rolls at $30.99 or jumping up to four rolls slightly more for $39.99. That's 10 cents a square foot. Let's go to their website. On their website, they have large half inch bubble wrap, 12 inches wide, 195 square feet for $39.99. And what did you just see from the brand that I use on Amazon for my affiliate link, four rolls, but it's not just four rolls, it's 400 square feet for $39.99. See where I'm going with this? That is a huge difference. The popular brand, 195 square feet for $39.99, that's 21 cents a square foot, which is actually cheaper than their Amazon link or the Amazon affiliate link that I use, 400 square feet for $39.99, only 10 cents a square foot. That is slightly less than half of the most popular brand, half the price. So I hope you see my point of this, comparing brands, comparing the size of bubble wrap, comparing the price per square foot of the bubble wrap. You might just be paying too much. You might be thinking you're getting a really good deal, but you very well might be paying way too much. Do your research. If you choose to buy from the affiliate links that I have below each of my videos for bubble wrap or foam wrap or whatever, do know I really try to find the best price and just as important, the best quality that I can find. And something else you may not realize that helps support our channel, if you like the brand that you purchase through our affiliate links, when you need to reorder, if you will come back to any of our videos and open up that drop down box and click on that link again for the bubble wrap, for the foam wrap, for whatever, that will help support us again. Please keep that in mind for reorders. Every penny helps. And yes, just like you, we, Mark and I, are pinching pennies. We are. Good morning. It's Saturday morning. Mark and I are heading to breakfast at the Golden Corral, but I don't eat dessert anymore. I haven't done that for a long time. And after that, we might pop in an estate sale. 
or we might pop into the Goodwill because we haven't been there for a long time and just see what the shelves look like. Still trying not to buy anything, but it's fun to look and you never know, there might just be something really, really good there. You never know. Burr, it's cold out here. Oh, I scared all the birds. It's cold, but the sun is shining, so that's always a great thing. But yeah, ooh, it's chilly. It is Saturday, February, I don't know what it is today. It's February 4th. Golden Corral. They have a great breakfast and they have a senior discount on Saturday, so it's not too expensive. It's 12 o'clock. We missed the estate sale. That's the way things went, mainly because of the post office. Woohoo! Woohoo what? We missed the sale. <laughs> you hear that? So instead we're going to run over to Goodwill which is right around the corner from the grocery store here and I just want to see how empty the shelves are. Woohoo. We need more stuff. I'm not trying to buy stuff. I'm just looking. Right. See you there. We're leaving Food City. There's the back of the Goodwill. You know the post office is just down the street as well. That's how close everything is. That's what gets me into trouble. Goodwill is right there. And it opened at 11 and it's noon. Long time since we've been here. Long time meaning probably six weeks, maybe seven. They still have Christmas out and seasonal. So I'll go through that. The shops don't look too bad. About normal. All right, if I find something, I'll let you know. Take a look over here. I have glasses similar to that. It's Libby. $8.99 for a set of 12. No marking. Direct source. $4.99. It's bisque, so it shows all the dirt and fingerprints. Turkey dish. I think it says ABC, just distributing $2.99. supposed to plug in. That's odd. It's probably old too. This is an old vanity dish to a Wild Rose Beauty Dust. Is that Avon? Yep, Avon. $1.99. I hate to say this, but I found an interesting <laughs> lamp. I love it. It's, it's got, got the, the Hobstar design in the center. Yeah. There's a night light in it with this switch. $4.99. We're getting it. Good find. Darn. <laughs> oh, it's, a, it's a good find, huh? Cool. It's heavy. to get these eight of them for $6.99 they're corralled. I found active listings for quite a bit but none sold. I don't understand why none sold. I guess I guess I'll leave them behind. That's heavy. It's a beautiful amber bowl. $6.99. This is Andy in a glass Vernon. I guess that's the pattern but they went $6.99 and one sold for $12 so I'm going to leave it behind. Pretty though. Should be a pain to ship though. Yeah, somebody put three crates together. It was very creative. 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 It was very creative, yes. Can I find a lamp? That's kind of cool. It's metal, but it's heavy. Oh my gosh, I can't even lift it with one hand. That's got to be 15 pounds. This is really cool. That is definitely mid century modern. It's ceramic. Oh my gosh. It's $2.99, but is that the lamp price? That would be yeah. very unusual. As we know, it's always good to get two. I'm gonna figure out how to ship these one day. You know, I've said that bowls can sell for more than the plates sometimes. We've got four Oneida bowls, two Oneida coffee cups. Or, no, it's four. It's $30 for 12 pieces. Oh my gosh. Four of these Oneida bowls sold for $34.99 plus shipping. Six of the coffee cups sold for $76 plus shipping. And four of the dinner plates sold for $42. So not too bad. We have to put these back because the plates 
the dinner plates have too many utensil marks and so can't do them. That's too bad. So they have these white dishes here, set of 29 for $14.99. Nine bowls, two, four, six, seven, nine bowls for $15. Great white pottery barn. The problem is the bowls are what I want and the bowls are in pretty decent condition, but all the plates are horribly scratched. And that's got some stuffing in it too. But I might do this, I'll have to show you why here, even though I'm going to donate back all of the plates. So that would be nine bowls, two, four, six, seven, nine bowls for $15. Can you believe that eight of these Pottery Barn Great White Cereal Bowls, eight of them sold for $175 plus shipping. They didn't have any pasta bowls, but keep your eyes out because six of these sold for $100. Free ship. So that's why I bought them, for the bowls. It's too bad that we had to put the Pier 1 bowls back, but we bought the Pottery Barn, and if the bowls are good enough, they'll be worth it. So we'll take these home, see if we can clean up the bowls, and if not, we'll just bring everything back. As long as you have your receipt at our Goodwill, you can do that. A few weeks ago, Nancy McCubbin said, it's a never-ending job referring to eBay or reselling in general. And Venus, Venus M61 replied, people do not know how hard we work until they decide to do it. That's why so many people drop out. And I responded, so true. It is absolutely true. eBay is hard. Reselling is hard. I think eBay is the most difficult, but it does bring the most money. It takes a huge commitment, a lot of time, Find the items, wash the items, photograph the items, list the items, sell the items, pack and ship the items. Is it worth it? I think so. Otherwise, I would have stopped a long time ago. Is it for everybody? Maybe not, because you have to be really disciplined. You have to be your own boss. Is it fun? I can only speak for myself, and absolutely, it is fun reselling. We sell on eBay, Macari, and Poshmark and I wouldn't have kept it up all these years if I wasn't having fun. I love finding things to resell. I love the research and the packing and the shipping. Once you get it down, it's fairly repetitive, you know, if you're shipping similar kind of things. So that gets easier. Dealing with customers, well, it's really far and few between. It really is. Even if I did share in vlog four <laughs> about a buyer return, you have to check that one out. You have to decide for yourself if it's worth it, but I assume you're watching this channel and other reselling channels because there's something about it you like, even if it's just the money. If you like me inserting your comments and my response, please leave a comment that you liked it. And if you ask me a question or make a comment that strikes my interest, I'll share more of them.